Hi everyone, welcome back. So we are now in our second video and we're gonna be setting up our database collections. So we have a list of users here, okay? Email, password, username, full name. I almost never use e username, but it's just something that um, that's, that's being used here. So let's think about um, what we need to add here. So for every user, which could be a tenant or it could be an admin, let's just set that now. So I'm gonna move myself over here and let's add the ability to have an admin. So that's just gonna be a true or false. Okay. Let's think about this. So every user will have a balance. Okay, that's a number. They will have probably some form of ID. We have some ID for them. Um, they should have a lease. Every renter will have a lease agreement. So that's gonna be a document. And let's just put in for our sake, a status, you know what? I'm just gonna make that underneath this username since I can't change this. There we go. Okay, we might come back to that and add some more things. Now, let's add a list of properties. Okay, so every property will have a name. Um, let's give it an image. Okay. Um, every property will have a renter. This is gonna be kind of complicated because it could be kind of weird, but I think Technically, the easiest way to do this is probably um, every user can have multiple properties, but a property belongs to one user. And what that means is, you know, technically, and I don't think you'd ever see this in any scenario, but, um, you know, you could have a renter that's renting multiple properties, but every property is only going to be assigned to one renter, okay? Okay. Technically, you could also have it like this. So if you had multiple renters in one property, maybe you'd do it like this. You know what? We'll, we'll go like this because that way a user can only rent one thing. They're only going to be on one lease at a time. But technically, you could have multiple people renting one property. So we'll add it like that. And we're going to call this tenants. Okay. Okay. Under users, we're actually gonna add another thing here. We're gonna add a number, and this is gonna be monthly rent, okay? The reason I'm adding this under the user is because the user is going to agree to a monthly rent. The property itself will not have its own monthly rent. And then I'm gonna put something here called invoices. Um, you know, let's call it rent payments. Okay, and each of those is gonna have a issue date. Okay, it'll have an amount. It'll have a due date. Okay, and it's gonna have a late fee date. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a true or false here, paid, yes, slash, no, okay. Now, let's set up our last collection here, okay. And that last collection is going to be called maintenance, okay. You know what? I'm going to add one, two more things here. One is... There's going to be a relationship to users. A user can have multiple rent payments. A rent payment is always going to belong to one user. We're going to call tenant. And we're going to do the same thing for properties. Okay. A property can have multiple rent payments. A rent payment must belong to one property. Okay. All right. We're running out of time here. Um, I'm probably going to have to go get a Loom Pro plan for this. It's probably about time. Good for you, Loom. Um, and I will see you guys in the part two of setting up the collections.